So the title of this video is Stop Making Excuses. And the reason I titled it Stop Making Excuses is because that's what I'm hearing a lot of. I'm hearing nothing but excuses for, from a lot of different people. I'm getting emails from subscribers, people that are not subscribers. And a couple of emails that I received on Friday uh, dealt with people that are having difficulty getting saved. They don't know why they can't get saved. Why won't Jesus save me? You know, uh, and, and one guy in particular, and this video is put particularly for you uh he claims that he has mental issues uh he's on medication he's on this and that and uh, he feels as though he can't get to christ like there's a wall he feels as though there's a wall up and he can't he can't get saved uh, now stop making excuses that's why i titled this video that stop making excuses because that's what they are they're excuses listen the reason most people especially the people that come to me with these type of complaints don't get saved it's because they don't want to get saved. They don't really want to let go of their idols. They're not ready to take Jesus as Lord. And what you need to understand is that idols come in many different forms. Okay, And one of the greatest idols is the idol of self-pity. Woe is me. I'm so, you know, I can't do this. And, you know, Jesus won't save someone like me. Or I think I've committed the unpardonable sin. Uh, I did this. Or I'm on the medication and it's got me going. And my mind isn't right. It's, it's, it's listen. You will go to hell, okay? Trusting in your excuses. This is not a game, okay? Do not play this game, okay? Do, there is no excuse. There's no excuse, okay? Most of the time, whenever I deal with people like this, I'm harsh. And I'm harsh because I need to bang home the point, okay? There, there's not a wall, okay? The wall is your pride, okay? The wall is your pride. That's what keeps you from Christ. You're not ready to take Jesus as Lord. Listen, when a person has recognized their need, okay, their need, meaning they have come to a conclusion that they are essentially worthless, okay, outside of Christ, we are worthless, okay, we have nothing we can offer Christ, okay, there's nothing we can present to God that would make ourselves look worthy enough to be saved, okay, there is nothing we can do, we are empty, we are worthless, we are miserable, we are pitiful, we are hopeless, okay, once a sinner has come to that realization, and that's a good thing when you get to that point, okay, then what you do is, in recognizing your need, you look to Christ. You run to Christ. You flee to Christ. Okay, listen, I have, had, I have heard countless testimonies of brothers, a couple of brothers from my own church. I've heard testimony from uh, Tim Conway, uh, Paul Washer, even myself. When we got to the point where we were just, we recognized it was nothing left. We couldn't look left. We couldn't look right. The only thing we could do was look to Christ and cry out. He saved us in a minute, instant. I remember I was saved in an instant, just like that, just like that, because we came to Christ with nothing in our hands, ready to take him. Not, and, and it's not always saved out of sheer understanding of who he is. Sometimes it's just self-preservation. Sometimes it's just, Lord, help me. Lord, help. OK, you just want out of your predicament. OK, and so a lot of times God will cause uh, trials to come into the sinner's life that will essentially break them and force them to look to Christ. That's what he did to me. OK, so it's not always this understanding or hearing, you know, hearing the gospel and then, you know, coming to the truth. But sometimes it's just Lord help. But even in that Lord help, we're not coming to God with excuses. We're not coming to him with woe is me. Oh, God, help me. But, you know, I, I, you know, I would come all the way, but I have this issue or, you know, I have this mental thing that you did to me or. I no, it's no excuses. Nothing in my hand I bring simply to the cross. I cling. That's it. OK, now to the person that would say that. OK, well, I can't come to God because there's like a wall. Listen, OK, if you were standing next to Jesus Christ near the pool of Bethesda. OK, if you were standing there when everyone was going into that pool of water and being healed. OK. And Jesus looked at you and said, do you want to be healed? And you said, yes, yes, Lord. Yes. And he said, OK, now walk into the pool of water. But you said, oh, I would. But I, you know, I got this mental issue thing. Uh, you know, um, I would walk in the pool, but, uh, you know, something's going on in my life and I can't. See, it's excuses. They're all excuses. OK. And it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Uh, you're not fooling anyone. You're not fooling anyone. So you need to be honest with yourself. You really need to be honest with yourself. What are you clinging to? What are you not willing to let go of? OK, because God's not going to save you unless you come on his terms, on his terms, not yours, on his. OK, and he 
he demands that you come empty handed. Okay, looking unto him and trusting in him as your only hope of salvation. That's the only way he's going to save you. But if you do it that way, honestly, sincerely, he will save you in an instant. Okay, he was, I, and I'm proof of it. He did it to me. All right, so I'm, I, stop playing these games. Stop playing these games. Stop placing fault with God as to why you can't be saved or why he's not saving me. Do some self-reflecting. What are, what are you not being honest about? Okay, and I don't care what kind of ailments you have, what kind of mental issues you have. Listen, we all have problems. We're all sinners. We're all broken. We're all in need of a savior. The point is your, your mental issues should drive you to the fact that you need a savior. Those truths about you should drive you to the truth that you are needy, that you need a savior. And understanding that truth should make you flee to the Lord. That's what it's meant to do. Not to meant, not not meant to have you sit there in self pity and go, "Woe is me! I can't do anything. I'm pitiful." Okay, you you can play that game and you'll play that game your whole life and die and go to hell. You will not find pity from the Lord on the day of judgment. I'm telling you right now, you're not going to hear God go, oh, "Okay, come here and get a hug." You know, I I know you had to struggle with that. I know. No, you're going to hear, "Depart from me, you work of iniquity." I never knew you. That's what you're going to hear. Stop playing this game. Get serious. Okay. Examine yourself, expose yourself and flee to Christ. He's willing to save, but only those who want to be saved and only those who come to him on his terms.